Hello. Today I'm going to dye for you a gold ribbed hare's ear with cool legs. I'm trying to mimic flies tied by Dave Rothrock who posts pictures of his nymphs that have perfectly formed um, quill wing cases with hackle fiber legs that just radiate from underneath in a, um, I don't know, very appealing to me sort of way. So we're going to tie this fly on a size 16. Uh, this is a GCO. Um, 9221. I'm going to use some of these darker f feathers from a partridge skin. They're a little on the large side, but we're going to um, um, kind of pluck them and trim them and just use little bunches of fibers for the legs. This is a hare's ear, so I'm going to use uh, some fibers and or guard hairs and fibers from that hare's mask. I'm going to rib it with the gold sulky. Um, it's thin for a size 16, which should work just fine. Um, going to take a section of that goose quill and use that for the wing case. Going to hold it all together with size 8 uh, uni thread in tan. And we've got our hook and device and we're going to get started. This hook has kind of a thick shank. It's barbless. Um, these guys go on sale for a couple of bucks a pack and um, to be honest for the for casual fishing and for the most part they do just fine um, they're not super expensive and uh, since I tie a bunch of flies and experiment I go through hooks faster than I can uh, keep up so here's our bundle of um, guard hairs taken from that hairs mask and I park the thread at the back of the hook right above the bend we'll get a wrap or two around those guard hairs and um, some debate about this. Some folks like to make their hare's ear um, nymph tails a little shorter than this. Um, I don't know. I go back and forth. This looked good to me today, so this is where we are. So those are tied down. We're going to trim off the excess. We trimmed it off at about the three-quarter point. And there's that sulky going in. So like I mentioned, it's a little thinner than some of the tinsels you get, but very strong for its size. And this is the gold hollow shimmer, keeping with the gold ribbed hair's ear. I let thread torque and held it to the far side. I'm going to come underneath with the first wrap so it won't be um, setting right on top of the tail or push the tail off to one side. And we're dubbing. So this is more more of the uh, fiber fur from that hair's mask. And this is the, um, the creamier section of hair's mask. I don't know. I think I actually have this backwards, but uh, a lot of the patterns seem to do it too. They do a, um, a creamy abdomen and a darker thorax. And I don't know. When I turn over rocks, I, they're creamy all the way up. But you, just in uh, keeping with tradition... I'll do the uh, the lighter tan cream in the back, and so let's push that back and kind of get started right in front of the tail. And I'm going to be careful, try to make a little bit of a build a little bit of a taper into the body. Um, it's going to have some hair and fiber stick out. And right about there, when I'm getting to that chunk of fur, uh, uh, Abdomen is actually done at this point. I'm going to use the rest of that fur to kind of level things off in front. And that will help later when we're adding other materials back in. But I am going to come back and park the thread right in front of the abdomen. Or where I think the abdomen should end. And in fact, we'll put a whip finish there. Just so things don't come undone. And we can use the rotary feature of the vise to rib the abdomen with the sulky. So I got a nice long piece of that. It's, uh, it's sl slick stuff to hold on to. So um, you get if you get too short, you end up using hackle pliers or something to hold it. So we're shooting for about four or five wraps. We'll stop where we had the thread parked. Get everything out of the way. Shorten up the uh, working thread so I can drop a loop over top and just kind of tie it off. I didn't counter wrap or anything. I don't think that's necessary. I think you do want to hide a little bit of that shininess, let some of the fuzz cover it up. 
Um, it depends on the water you're fishing and how weary the trout are too. So the abdomen's done. Get rid of a couple of longer guard hairs. And there's that section. I've been trying to keep these um, the width of, say, a hook gap. And I have the shiny side down. And I'm tying in the tip. I used to tie them in the other way, but guessing where the thick part began or ended. and It used to get me into trouble. So I've been tying them in by the tip. And then I have a nice long chunk of um, feather to hold on to when I pull it over. So we'll trim off the excess. And then this is me mimicking what Dave does. I, I haven't seen him tie his fly. I just am trying to get the same result. And this is as close as I was able to get. So there are those two feathers that were trimmed. I kind of bundled them all together. What you see sticking up in the back is where I nipped out the centers. You can see the stubs still sticking forward. So I pulled that back. Um, we're going to adjust the length here. I think those are still a little long. They might have been a little bit long at the end too. But long legs and long tails don't really hurt my feelings. I seem to still catch fish. I like movement. So basically what I'm trying to do here is do, you know, almost like a sparkle done or, um, or even posting these up to where there's a bundle sitting straight on top. I'm going to reach in and trim off the excess of those feathers. I've got them tied down pretty good. And we're going to get that darker hair's ear dubbing and kind of filling around these things. If you get off with other things and you get back to dubbing with rabbit fur, rabbit fur is, um, is kind of very easy to dub with. It's, it already comes about the right length. The very fine fibers kind of tangle with the, the stiffer ones. and uh, You can make a pretty good looking uh, dubbing noodle and uh, it does a nice job. So we'll get a couple wraps behind and make that uh, you know, the bulb, bulbous beginning of a thorax. And then I'm going to go in front and kind of uh, jam some wraps in against those those fibers from the partridge feather. And I want to call that done there. I probably made more stray fibers and little tiny hairs than I needed to. I could just wrap that in, but I was worried about leaving space behind the eye. So there's my little toft or post of those um, partridge feather fibers. And I'm going to put another whip here just to make sure things don't move as I'm jostling everything around to finish this off. So I'm going to come in and kind of flatten things out and divide them as evenly as I can. And this is where things are starting to look like the uh, what I wanted the outcome to be. I have the fibers coming from a single point in the middle underneath where the wing case is going to be. I'm going to pull that over. I realize about this point I can't just pinch and pull everything back. and That's not going to work like it does in some instances. So we'll fiddle with those fibers a little bit. But basically I'm going to get it the thread in front of the, the bundles of legs, one wrap over the quill, and give it a little tug and tighten it down. And I'm evaluating a little bit, but I more or less got what I wanted. And we're going to call that good and trim out the excess quill. I've got to be careful here. I don't want to nip the thread and have things fly apart. That always warrants a do-over, and it's a big deal because you have to go back, and the, uh, there's never enough uh, quill section to pull the case wing case back over. 
But there's that dark wing case that I'm kind of after. It kind of uh, imitates a, an insect ready to hatch. Or one that matches the color of the rocks as it's clinging to the bottom. And we'll get everything out of the way. Wrap back over the uh, ends of that quill a little more. And that was tan thread, and I want a brown head to kind of match things. So we're going to bring in the Pantone marker and color up the thread. And then I'm going to wrap back over it, and then whip finish on the way down. So three or four turn whip finish should be fine. We're going to use plenty of head cement. I thought my thread was frayed there, but that was some rabbit fur. You know, slice off the excess and kind of prompt, prep it a little bit so it looks like I want it and. I almost did what you do, Dave, but yours are still better. So there it is from the bottom. And I'm going to put a nice uh, generous helping of Sally Hansen's across the wing case and uh, come down over the thread wraps a little bit and let that soak in. I want to make sure I get a little bit that soaks down to where those legs come out. It'll kind of freeze them in place and hold them apart, but that's the fly. Um, I think it'll fish like any other hare's ear. The water will probably wash those fibers back against the side. But on camera and video and pictures, um, it looks pretty appealing to me. So I'll probably get better at these as I go. Um, let me know if you catch a fish on one of these or something like it. Let me know if I can improve on anything here. And if you hung in there, thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. And until next time, be safe.